Hello everybody, it's me, it's Welcome to HD, and welcome back to some more Dragalia Lost content. And in today's video, I'm going to be discussing three stars that I believe should be promoted. Now, of course, this is mainly just my opinion, but I do have some backup with the likely and the lovely DPS calculator that I'm going to be leaving in the description down below. So if you want to check all of these, um, all the facts that I'm saying uh, for yourself, I will leave the DPS calculator in the description down below. Just learn how to use it and you can check the DPS for all the adventures that I'll be saying. Now in this video, I'm going to be discussing adventures, like I said, three-star adventures that I believe uh, are good enough and valid a promotion, whether it be for different reasons, support, DPS, or whatever, I'll talk about them. I'll be giving two adventures from each element. Uh, but before all that, of course, I'll give some honorable mentions. Uh, like I said, two adventures for each element. And they may be the same weapon type, they may be different weapon types. The order that I go from will be Flame, Water, Wind, Light, then Shadow. But before all that, let's get into some honorable mentions. So honorable mentions will begin with Valentine's Orion. I believe Valentine's Orion uh, is limited. Well, he is limited, so keep that in mind. You may not have him. He may not show up again for a while. He's one of the only two limited adventures on this list, and they're both honorable mentions, so keep that in mind. Then we have Jacob Rickart. Rickart is the only healer that's in this list because, unfortunately, the three-star healers are not very good support, especially when you compare them to their four-star or five-star counterparts. So, very unfortunate, but Ricard, I did want to include a healer on this list, and uh, Ricard is the one. So Ricard, Philia, Halloween Edward, again, a limited unit with Halloween Edward, but I wanted to include him since he does have something that stands apart with his kit, Malka, and Zay. So those are the honorable mentions. They are all valid and worth promoting. Of course, there's a lot of great adventures. I can't include every single one of them. These are just the best of the best. So again, if your favorite three-star adventure is not on this list, uh, you know, no harsh feelings, but these adventures that I include are the best of the best when it comes to three stars. So, without further ado, let's begin with the flame element. So, on the left, we have Aoi. Aoi is the budget Mikoto. That's her nickname now. Aoi is, of course, a three-star blade adventure. She comes with two attacking skills, which deals good damage, and the strength co-ability which again is very, very nice. It increases the t entire team's DPS by a bunch. Again, it's equal with five stars now with the brand new update. Brand new, I mean, it's a little bit old by now, but the new update makes code buddies all equal now. And her ability, she comes with Sleep Res 75% and Overdrive Punisher 8%. So Overdrive Punisher, again, bosses will be in overdrive, overdrive state for most of the battle. But it isn't the greatest ability. There's definitely better abilities when it comes to DPS. So keep that in mind. Now, where does Aoi stand in terms of DPS? Well, she's actually the best three-star adventure in Flame when it comes to DPS. Again, this is as of June 2019. So if a new adventure comes out that's better than her, then that's just it. But she is the best three-star Flame adventure when it comes to DPS in the three stars. So that's why she's on this list. Again, she's Mikoto, but the budget variants. She's very good, though. She does not need to be promoted to get that Overdrive Punisher. Keep that in mind. So it comes with all of these uh, all these adventures. They do not need to be promoted to get that ability, but they do need to be promoted to get the most of the ability and the skills and everything. So keep that all in mind. That is Aoi and why I believe she should be promoted. Next up is Xania. Xania is a wand user, which means she brings that wand co-ability to the team. Uh, Wand Cobit is, of course, skill damage up. Uh, she comes with two attacking skills, just like Aoi. She's pretty good for DPS. She's actually second when it comes to three star flame adventures. Um, she's very good because of her ability, which offers skill damage up by 20%. Again, with two sk attacking skills, it's actually very nice and very helpful. Uh, she comes with stun rest 75%, but of course, you don't really aim for the resistances when it comes to three stars. You just use them for their kit or to fill a void. So that is Xania. She is not as good as um, Sinoa. For the most part, Sinoa has a better gap, but Xania is a little more consistent. So she is under uh, Sinoa's top when it comes to DPS because if she gets a bunch of strength ups, of course, uh, then Sinoa is very, very good. So keep that in, all in mind, and that is Xania and why I believe she is a great three-star flame adventure to be promoted. So those are the flame adventures. Next up, let's hop into the water adventures. So first up on water adventures, we have Rex. Now Rex 
is actually when it comes to water ventures, these two uh, that I have recommended are very good when it comes to DPS. So Rex is actually second when it comes to DPS in water adventures, which is incredibly surprising, but he's actually very, very strong. Now he's only behind Ellie, and as we all know, Ellie is first because her buff uptime is just absolutely insane. So he's right behind Ellie, he's the strongest water unit uh, when it comes to DPS. And he's very consistent. Why is he consistent? Because his DPS comes from his two skills. He has two skills, they're both attacking skills, and that's where the DPS mainly comes from. So that's uh, that's why he's second in there. He comes with burn rest 75% and gauge inhibitor. Slows the rate the mode gauge increases by 25%. That's not the greatest ability, but his two skills, he brings a defense cobody because he has an axe. And so he doesn't bring too much support even as an axe, but he is very nice when it comes to DPS. So if you're looking for straight out damage and an axe and you don't have Karina, I would say Rex is the next best option. Of course, he does require a bit of investment, but he is great when it comes to DPS, and that is Rex. Next up is another water axe. Now, this is the only one with two of the exact same weapon types, so uh, keep that in mind, is Pietro. Pietro, of course, is an axe. He brings that defense co-ability. Why am I recommending two, um, two axes? Well, uh, Pietro is a little bit different. He's more of a support unit than Rex. Why is he more of a support unit? Well, he does bring one attacking skill, but the other skill, his second skill, is actually a shield skill, which uh, nullifies damage less than 20% of the user's HP. A one-use shield for, um, for yeah, that's what it does. It grants all teammates a shield. So uh, it's a very good support. Uh, he brings DPS as well, whereas Sabella does not. Sabella is another water unit, water unit that brings a shield. He brings much more support and more DPS than Sabella. He also offers... Uh, like I said, the defense co-ability, again, support. You can use defense co-ability instead of the uh, lance co-ability when it comes to Hybrid Hilda, so if you're trying to bring into that. But unfortunately, he does not have burn res. He has blindness res, which really hurts him. Blindness res, 75%. Uh, there's really no content which requires blindness res in the water adventure category, so that's a pretty big downfall. But his other ability is critical damage plus 13%. So adds 30% to the modifier applied to critical damage, which is... Very nice, especially since he's a water adventurer, which means that you could couple this with Dragon Yule Jean, which ups your crit rate, so you can get a higher crit rate and crit damage. Of course, critical hits are not the best strategy, but it is a good strategy, and it potentially allows for a lot of DPS. Where does he rank when it comes to DPS? He is under Rex and under Zardin when it comes to three-star adventures, but he's still above the likes of Lily and Dragon Yule Cleo, so keep that all in mind. And he's pretty consistently above them as well, since uh, there isn't too there isn't too much luck depending on what set you bring, of course. But again, he does not bring a good resistance, which is probably the biggest downfall when it comes to Pietro. So, those are the water adventures that I recommend you to promote. Next up, we're gonna go into the wind adventures. Now, the wind adventures are um, a little bit tricky. Both of these two that I'm recommending for certain reasons, which I'll go over right now. So first up, we have Melody. Melody is a great three-star adventure. I believe she's the best, question mark, three-star adventure uh, in the game. So that just goes to show how good she is. Now, how is she the best three-star adventure? Well, by herself, she won't be dealing too much damage. Uh, she brings an attacking skill with her skill two, which uh, again, you don't really you don't really get the skill two off as much. But the main thing here is the skill one, made for mayhem, increases the entire team strength by fifteen percent for fifteen seconds. So that is a very nice skill. It increases the entire team strength. Of course, any supporting three star that increases strength for the entire team is very good. And actually has a nice uptime of 15 seconds. Again, it's a skill one, which means it's gonna charge up very quickly, kind of like Ellie's, but of course not as fast as Ellie's. So uh, keep that in mind. But again, she's a blade rather than a lance, which means she has a strength up co-ability, strength up by 10%, which helps out the team's DPS even more. Uh, her abilities, full HP equals critical rate up by 8%. Of course, full HP is not too hard to keep in a high Mercury, which is the content that you're going to want to bring her to. She unfortunately has Freeze Res rather than Bog Res, but again, high Mercury does not require Bog Res at all. She has Freeze Res 75%, in case you're wondering. But why is this a tough recommend? Because there is Addis. Addis is just a better DPSer when it comes to uh, you know dealing damage. His minimum is a little bit less than Melody's maximum when it comes to DPS. Now. 
Uh, I'm not sure if this takes into account the fixed um, bleeding strategy, but uh, he's likely still going to be around the same area because bleed is just such a great affliction. So keep that in mind. Again, uh, she's still great. I would highly, highly recommend her. If you're looking to promote a win three-star, this is going to be the three-star that you should promote. Melody is very good. The better the team is, the better she is. So she's a great, great, great three-star adventure. And like I said, I highly recommend promoting her. Uh, if you're planning on using someone for High Mercury, you can actually use her uh, with you know the four-star Dragon Rock, and she's actually still very good because, again, her DPS mainly comes from increasing the other team members' DPS. So... That's the strength about Melody. So that's Melody and why I think you should promote her. Next up is Johanna. Johanna or Johanna. <laughs> Johanna is a Axe. Again, another Axe uh, three-star adventure in the win category. Uh, why am I recommending Johanna? Well, Johanna comes with two attacking skills. Uh, they're both good attacking skills. Again, Axes usually have good attacking skills, and she does not go away from that. She comes with the defense co ability, which again supports the team, but she's not a very good team player. Why is she not a very good team player? Well, you want to use her for events like challenge battles or horde wave content because of her ability, Slayer's Strength. Now, uh, you might be saying, well, um, hold on a minute. This sounds like an adventure I already have. It sounds a lot like Ranzel. Well, she actually deals more DPS than Ranzel by a pretty good chunk, too. So that's the reason I'm re recommending Johanna. Again, if you have Ranzel uh, and you don't want to invest into Johanna, if you don't invest in Johanna, Ranzel is probably better. So uh, keep that in mind. Ranzel does bring support to the team, but uh, Johanna is better when it comes to dps so if you're looking for a solo soloer soloer is that a word soloer when it comes to win adventures and uh for of course horde wave content johanna is very good since he does bring two attacking skills to the squad rather than a shield which is what ranzel brings uh her affliction resistances or yeah susceptibility uh she has freeze res 50 percent and poison res 25 percent which uh, again, you don't really, those aren't the greatest, but uh, you, you're not using her for affliction resistances. Uh, you're using her for the Slayer strength and the two attacking skills. So that's the reason you would use Johanna over the likes of Ranzel. Those are the win three stars I recommend you promoting. Next up, we're going to get into the light adventures. So the two light adventures I recommend you to promote. Uh, we begin with Zhao Lei. Now, I'm not sure if I'm saying that name right. Uh, hopefully, I am. Zhao Lei, uh, she is a wand, another wand user in the light category. Uh, she comes with an attacking skill as her first one, uh, which is, you know, of course, standard for wand users. But her second skill, what it does is it increases the entire team's critical rate by 8% and adds 40% to the modifier applied to critical damage for 10 seconds. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it increases crit rate and crit damage, but it's only for 10 seconds. Now, uh, only for 10 seconds, which is a big downfall, but if it was any longer, honestly, she would be absolutely insane when it comes to DPS. So uh, her second skill is the main reason you would promote her. She increases the team's damage pretty much, and that's the best thing that you could really ask for in a three-star sense. Uh, most of them are not going to be dealing more damage than the five stars, uh, but what she does is increases those five stars damage dealing rates, as well as bringing the skill damage up co-ability by 15%, of course. So she adds a lot to the team. She's a team supporter, just like Melody is. The better her teammates are, the better she is. Uh, she is actually the best three-star when it comes to light adventures to promote, since she uh, deals the highest DPS. Again, the better her teammates, the better she is. She's actually very good. Her abilities, uh, she comes with skill damage plus 20%. So not only does she bring a skill damage co-ability, uh, she brings a skill damage ability for herself. Again, she only has one attacking skill, so only powers up that one skill. But again, it's very nice. It's better than a lot of other abilities that three stars have. And she has poison rest 75%. Again, if you bring her to something like High Zodiac, which is going to come out in the future, uh, you're going to want to bring that worm pro on her that brings curse rise because again the only reason you would promote her is for that second skill and if she's cursed then she can't even use this skill so you're definitely going to want to bring that if you're bringing it to high, high uh, zodiac so keep that in mind that's zhao lei and she is very good like i said when her teammates are good next up we have raymond now why am i recommending raymond over uh, malka malka deals better dps 
uh, when it comes to three stars, but the reason I'm recommending Raymond. Now, Raymond is a sword light adventure. Now, if you have Albert or Odetta, I don't really see a reason for you to promote <laughs> Raymond at all. So keep that in mind uh, that you don't really need to promote Raymond if you have one of those two, since they're better in pretty much every single way and they have more poison res. So keep that in mind. He brings the Dragon Haze Co ability. Uh, not too great. It comes with two skills which deals damage, but the reason I'm recommending Raymond is because his first skill deals two hits of 305% light damage to enemies directly ahead and inflicts stun for four to five seconds with 100% base chance. So this skill inflicts stun, which has actually been proven to be very useful when it comes to challenge battle stunning, the boss letting your team get a bunch of free hits in or clearing out the enemies around and then going back to the boss, whatever it may be. It's actually a very good and very helpful skill. So that's the reason I'm recommending Raymond over someone like Malka. Uh, Malka does have better DPS, but Raymond brings nice support with his skill, the first skill. So keep that in mind. His abilities, last defense, nothing too great. And poison red, 75%. Again, nothing too great abilities. But I'm recommending him simply for the fact that he brings that paralysis, or not process, sorry, stun. He brings stun with his first skill. So that's the reason I'm recommending Raymond over Malka. So those are the light adventures I recommend. Now let's get into the shadow adventures I would recommend. So the shadow adventures I would recommend, um, I was debating between Zace, of course, Zace almost made this list, but I decided to go with Rodrigo over Zace. Rodrigo is another sword. Of course, this time he is a shadow element sword. Uh, Rodrigo is actually the highest DPS when it comes to three star shadow adventures. Um, not by a lot because uh, the other one, the other three star I have on here is a close second, but he is the best. How is he the best? Why is he the best? Well, he comes with two of the skills that deal damage, two skills that deal damage. Uh, they're both pretty good skills. There's nothing uh, too crazy about them, but they both deal damage. He brings the Dragon Haze Code ability. Again, nothing great with the Dragon Haze Code ability, but it is there. Uh, but his ability, this is what brings him to the most damage. Um, most DPS. HP 70% equals strength up. Now strength increases by 8%. So if your HP is above 70%, then he's going to have a constant influx of strength up by 8%. Now it doesn't sound too great, but every single hit he does will be increased by 8% when he is above 70%. Now this is actually going to rack up quite a bit if you can keep him above 70% along with his two skills again they don't take too long to charge so they can deal a bunch of damage and he brings paralysis 75% which is potentially useful for high jupiter once it's released but again well, we need to wait until to see until uh, high jupiter is actually released see if that's even uh even useful at all again that's the reason I'm recommending Rodrigo he's a the, actually the top DPS when it comes to three stars so that's why I'm recommending him over Zace the other shadow adventure I'd recommend is Altemia or Altemia? I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. She is another wand, shadow wand this time. She brings two attacking skills, uh, just like Rodrigo. Again, two attacking skills that are very nice. Uh, and I'll take the second one takes a little bit longer to charge up than the usual one, so keep that in mind. Uh, she brings the skill damage co ability. Again, increases skill damage for the entire team by 15%, and her ability is 75% paralysis resistance. Again. Pretty good for High Jupiter once that is released. And full HP equals skill damage up by 25%. This is again the same thing with Rodrigo. They're both conditional increases, but um, hers is a little a little more pivotal when it comes to um, boosts than it is with Rodrigo. Now, if her HP is not full, her DPS will drop off considerably. Uh, so it's very hard to keep full HP. Of course, we have to wait to see when High Jupiter is released, but keeping full HP is a little tough at times. So you're not always going to get the greatest DPS, but if you can keep her at full HP, her DPS is second when it comes to the restars, and she's actually above climbing. So she's very good when it comes to DPS while she is at full health. So that's the reason I'm recommending all Temya. She is good when at full health, but again, if you can't keep her at full health, she's not going to be the greatest. So. Those are the Shadow Adventures I would recommend you promote in the three-star category. And those are actually all the adventures that I would recommend you promoting. That's everyone I recommend. Again, if you have other recommendations, leave them in the comments. And of course, explain why you would recommend them over 
uh, who I recommended. There's a, there's a bunch of great three stars. Uh, there's a lot of potential in three stars. So keep that in mind. This is, of course, just who I think you should promote and why, of course, was said. Again, I'll leave a link to the DPS simulation chart in the description down below. You need to play around with the settings a bit to get some, to get them to where I am. So keep that in mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. And, uh, you know, like I said, leave your recommendations for promotions in the comments down below. See you guys next time. Take care.